Now, I, I was thinking about ShareFest, and I was thinking about uh, many of us probably have some various thoughts and feelings about this. And uh, I, I can probably own that I am guilty of that uh, mentality that when you hear of a need in a community or in a person's life, it's oftentimes it, the easier thing to do is just throw some money at it and let someone else who really has a passion for that take care of it. You ever been responsible, or can you take responsibility that you have had that kind of mentality when there's needs that you hear about? I, uh, I think that there's a prominent attitude that many of us have that when we're thinking of reaching out to someone who's different than us, that we kind of feel a little like a fish out of the water, like, how can I reach out to them? I don't know how to relate to a person in that kind of situation. It's like Jack here, who's a chaplain in the prison in Canyon City. Um, Jack never spent a night in jail. And uh, Jack is like as clean and as goody two-shoes as they come. <laughs> right, Jack? <laughs> But Jack has a very effective, profound ministry in the prisoners there, with the prisoners there. Some of us, when we think of working with the homeless or the poor, you know, we kind of think like, you know, I can't relate to them because I've never been homeless and, and I'm not living in poverty myself. And so there's this barrier that kind of goes up in our mind that they're unapproachable. And so we kind of, again, hand it over to someone else who can relate to those people better than we can. So, admittedly, I, I understand that we can't jump on every bandwagon that gets thrown in front of us. There are so many needs out there, and you know, every week we, we could throw a new project out to you guys and say, you guys need to do this now. We just can't do that. But I think with what is coming with ShareFest, I think this is an opportunity that it gives every one of us an opportunity to play. Now, when, I, when we think about reaching people that have needs in our community, I did a little research, and uh, I found out that 13.4% uh, of the people in Mesa County are living under the poverty level. The uh, the Colorado average is actually 11.1%, so we're a little higher than the Colorado average. I uh, looked up child abuse. In 05, there were, were reported uh, actual confirmed cases of 367 cases of child abuse. In 07, the Department of Human Services reported that they had over 30 contacts per month of elderly abuse and neglect. So we think of people that you hear in the news that are being victimized by criminal, criminal acts and identity theft and Achilles tendons injuries. <laughs> Your heart just goes out to them, doesn't it? God bless you guys. <laughs> but the point I'm making is, is we can hear so many things that there's so many problems and, and so many needs that we can actually turn a deaf ear to it. That we just become like inundated and we become immune to it uh, because it gets to that point of we're so, we feel so helpless, like what can I do to make a difference when the needs are so great? But I think with, like I said with ShareFest, I think ShareFest is truly an opportunity if we all band together with this as Canyon View Church and then join in the other 29 churches that are doing this. I believe we have the opportunity to impact individual lives. I believe we have the opportunity to impact families. I believe we have the opportunity to impact neighborhoods. I believe we have an opportunity to impact our whole community. I really do. Now, there's a verse from the Old Testament, from Deuteronomy 11, verse 13. And as I read this, I want you to think and uh, 
what it's saying about the heart of God. It says, so if you faithfully obey the commands I am giving you today to love the Lord your God and to what? Serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. Then it goes on and it says, then I will send rain on your land in its season. That's a great promise. And it's one of those covenants that God makes is if you do this, then I will do this. I looked up serve in the Strong's, and serve means to work, labor, do, to worship, minister, to do work in ministry, to be plowed, to cultivate. Now listen to that, that's interesting, to be plowed and to cultivate, to be caused to serve. So what this is saying here with this word worship and in this concept from Deuteronomy 11 is worship first and are serving first and foremost is a means of worship. It's a means of worshiping God. The second thing is when we work and labor for God, what God does is He cultivates the hearts of people for the Spirit of God to come and move in their hearts. And one of the things that the church has probably gone the other side with is we just need to give a, uh, a dialogue to people to help them to understand the gospel. And so we have these intellectual discussions with people to lead them to Christ, per se. That's the old modernistic way of evangelism. But I think what people are looking for is they don't want to hear the gospel, they want to see it. And the way they see it is by the church banding together and going out and loving our community in a tangible way. So I get this picture that when we plow the ground and we cultivate it through these acts of service, I believe as a picture of the rain will come. And the rain is a picture of the Spirit of God coming and where the Spirit of God comes and the, and the rain comes, life springs forth. Life in people's hearts. I was talking to Susie uh, in our office who works in the servant evangelism department and she was telling me about they did a test run on a project last weekend and all of a sudden all these doors started opening up to their group as they were reaching out to a neighbor that lived across the street from Susie and Tom Vaughn. So I want you to watch this testimony of Susan, Susie and hear her story of what God did through them just going and serving a neighbor. Let's turn to the screens. My small group went out and did our ShareFest project because we're going to be so busy with um, the launch and the celebration, since we're all ushers and greeters and information workers and things like that, that we won't have a time on that ShareFest weekend to do a project. So we went and did a project. We adopted um, an 85-year-old lady um, who said that she needed a shed torn down. Uh, we organized with our home group we have a Bible study at the house, and our, our home group uh, agreed to do this type of thing. And it, uh, it was really nice. This is an 85-year-old lady who has uh, quite an accumulation of things, and the, the shed was, is pretty much a, an eyesore and about ready to fall down. On Saturday morning, we got together and we tore that baby down. We went to May's house and helped her clean up her property, and which was awesome. It was just awesome to share in that experience because I've never done something like that before. And the neighbors had been complaining about, uh, this is such a trashy place. We just have to do something about it. Grumble, grumble, grumble. And when they found out that this was happening, some of the neighbors came and helped as well. 
And that was exciting because instead of being mad at the lady, some of the neighbors came and helped. You could feel the joy in everybody that was present. It was, it was a good adventure with our home group and with a few of our neighbors. It's just an overwhelming experience. And, and you could tell that the blessing was there, that the weather was cloudy and it didn't rain on us. It just was nice. I don't know, God's hands were there, that's for sure. The energy that he gave all the people that were there, I'm sure his hands were upon all of us that were participating. Well, I think the lady was very, very thankful that we, could, that we did this for her. Uh, not only did we tear down the shed, but we did some yard cleanup also for her. We made a difference for the lady. Uh, we made a difference for the neighborhood, and I think that's going to be multiplied um, enormously all through the city, and I'm so excited about that. Wasn't that great? I hope that makes you jealous because it'll motivate you to do a project too. Now, one thing that I want to emphasize, when, when you read the scriptures and you read the Bible, the Bible talks a lot about doing tangible acts of service in people's lives. I love this quote from Beth Moore. And she says that, the scripture challenges the American me-centered approach to the Bible where we want God to give us something we need or want. This is also one of Jesus' words that challenges a mindset that Christianity is all about a pursuit of knowledge and good theology. It moves us beyond an intellectual ascent to God to a God-centered approach to the scriptures where our lifestyles is challenged with what happens when God's love gets a hold of our hearts. You see, it's what Beth Moore is saying is the scripture grabs hold of our hearts and moves us and motivates us to do good things for people. Now, I want us to turn now to Matthew 25. Now, this is a profound statement that Jesus is making here. He's using a parable. And I want you to read with me in Matthew 25, verse 31. Now, Jesus said, When the Son of Man comes in His glory, and all the angels with Him, He will sit on His throne in heavenly glory. All the nations will be gathered before Him, and He will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on His right and the goats on His left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, listen to this, I tell you the truth, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine you did for me. I'm glad it didn't say one of the shortest of these brothers. <laughs> but you can do things for me too. <clears throat> now, this text, I, I just want to clarify, if we look at this in context, the chapter 24 and 25 of Matthew, Jesus is talking about what the end times are going to be like. And these are signs of what will happen in the, these end times. So many theologians will assert that this passage is really talking to how 
the church or Christians or others treat his people during the Great Tribulation. And many believe that his people that it's talking about here are those that are Jews, that become Christians. But aside from that, I think the point that he's making here is that when we do acts of kindness for in, to individual people, Jesus sees it as if we're doing it to him. That's kind of a, a deep thought, isn't it? He says, if you serve the least of these, you serve Jesus himself. Now, from a, from a biblical perspective, the way we can kind of, excuse me, wrap our minds around this, I want you to turn back to Genesis 1 with me. We have to go way back to the beginning to see why Jesus could say something like this. And I want to clarify what he's talking about. Genesis 1, verse 26 it says, then God said, let us make man, man in our, what? Image, in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over the livestock, over all the earth, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. Now, the Hebrew word for image here, it means, listen to this, to shade, a phantom, illusion, or resemblance. Hence, a representative figure. So, in, from, when you take the Hebrew word of image, what it means is we get a glimpse of God in each other. It doesn't mean that we're all gods. You got that clear? Okay, we got to make that distinction there because if I'm a God, you guys are in a heck of a lot of trouble. <laughs> Believe me. What it's meaning here is that in each of us, we get a little picture of the nature of God. And we can see a little of God in every person who walks on this earth because God created us in his image. Okay, are you with me on that? Now, this is something that I want us to look at is as we are created in his image, now we need to understand that as we have a relationship with Jesus Christ, that there is an issue of the heart that God begins to work on in each of us. And what I'm talking about is God begins to develop a love and compassion for the broken in us because that's the Father's heart for them. And so we are doing something like Sherefest because it's the Father's heart. So, as you grow in your love for Jesus, what happens is, all of a sudden you start noticing that your heart grows for people that ha 